you're watching the Telco as a Platform Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels. Now, this past year or so has seen a renewed interest in APIs, application programming interfaces. The Open Gateway initiative from the GSMA was launched back in early 2023 to establish a framework of common network APIs designed to give developers universal access to operator networks. Well, I'm delighted to say that joining me now to discuss the initiative is Alex Sinclair, the Chief Technology Officer of the GSMA. Hello, Alex. It's very good to see you. So can you tell us what is the current status of the Open Gateway initiative and has it met your expectations in terms of operator engagement? That's a great question, Guy. The current status is that our members are fully engaged, as are their technology partners. Well, I would say we're making pretty solid progress. Uh, you mentioned it was launched last year in Barcelona. We've had around 47 operated groups. They, that represents about... 239 mobile networks, I think, at the moment, opcos, and it covers around 65% of global mobile connections from you know, Brazil to China, Norway to New Zealand. Uh, we're working with a whole bunch of technology partners and cloud providers like AWS and Infobib and Microsoft, Nokia, Ericsson, Vonage, and the operators so far have made about 95 APIs commercially available. Um, that's in about 20, 21 countries, I think, at the moment, but that's just the beginning. And just to sort of illustrate the point, it was yesterday that we announced that uh, the three Chinese operators, China Mobile, China Telecom, and China Unicom, have launched the first commercial open gateway APIs in China. So they've launched a one-time password API, which we're all familiar with. So you can deliver that to a phone, and the user can provide proof of possession of, of the device. Uh, typical use cases are the ones you'd expect, onboarding the digital services, high-value banking transactions, etc. In further news, we also announced that uh, City Telecom, Huawei, and ZTE have joined the initiative. Um, so, yeah, I think I would say it succeeded our initial expectations, but there's a very, very long way to go. Well, that's great news, Alex. And uh, it was also very good to see the initiative have so much prominence at MWC again this year uh, and that it is continuing. Um, can I ask you how this fits with the Kamara project? Can, can you describe this relationship with the Linux Foundation and how or even if the development of Kamara and Open Gateway are linked? Yeah, another great question. So let me start by saying from the very beginning, we were adamant we weren't going to duplicate the efforts of others. Now, that's notably Camera for the service uh, APIs, but also the TM Forum for their operate APIs. So we work very closely with both. We have a pretty strong relationship with uh, Camara. For example, we're on the Camara Technical Steering Committee and the Outreach Committee. And actually, the APIs are actually defined, developed, and published by Camara. And it's an open source Linux Foundation project, which you're probably aware of, and it's got pretty broad participation. So, you know, by collaborating together, we can sort of realize our joint objective of exposing this new API NAS framework. Um, and that will make sure that partnerships and developers will have access to users across many, many operators. Um, in fact, in 2023, we published a paper with Kamara and the TM Forum documenting how we do this. It's called the Ecosystem for Open Gateway NAS uh, API Development. Okay, thanks for the update there, Alex. Um, it's all about developers, really, or getting developers involved to deliver these services. So what has been the response from the developer community? Because we do hear from developers that there's general gripes about API sprawl. So is, is there really an appetite for more APIs? Well, it's still early days, but I think the response so far has been pretty positive, and we have seen some interesting use cases coming through. I mean, as you kind of alluded to, as an industry, we have to be clear that you know this isn't necessarily our strong suit dealing with developers, and we have to listen more to what they want and what they need. Uh, many operators have, of course, early adopter programs, developer programs. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we want to reach as many developers as, as possible. So as well as the sort of operator direct outreach, we're going to some of the, the bigger audiences as well. So we're going to sort of AWS reinvent, for example, to get through to as many developers as possible. In return, we are sort of showcasing what some of the developers do. Um, in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago, for example, in our talent arena at the Mobile World Capital stand, we had a 48-hour Open Gateway hackathon. So they were basically using three of the APIs, uh, SIM swap, number verify, and uh, voiceover Wi-Fi. No, Wi-Fi, quality on demand, I think. Um, so the developers could test their skills by literally developing in two days. The winners had to defend their actual solutions in a boxing ring, which was quite novel. 
and they produce applications for sort of public administration, healthcare, and streaming broadcast. So yeah, I think it's early days, as I said, but we're seeing some good momentum, and we are trying to take it on the road, as it were, to some of the bigger developer communities. Well, you outlined there how the GSMA can help and some of the initiatives that the GSMA is doing to, to sort of stimulate this and, and uh, encourage engagement, which has been traditionally difficult for telcos. You also mentioned the, the hyperscaler approach. Um, is a reliance, reliance might be a strong word, but is, is, is the use of, of, of hyperscalers here one of the keys? Because the global telcos are traditionally more national. Is it easier for developers to get excited when they're dealing with global opportunities? Well, it does vary, of course, from API to API. Some are, you know, have very local sort of um, utility, whereas others have maximum benefit globally. But we see three basic routes to market. I think you've mentioned most of them. Um, and we've actually seen all three of them emerge. You know, we have the direct to sort of customer and customer approach where a partner, you know, operator will partner with an enterprise directly. Uh, obviously, there's a ton of aggregators involved, as you'd expect, and that's still growing. But we are seeing strong uh, participation from the cloud players as well, the hyperscalers. And they have very, very valuable marketplaces, of course, that where we can hopefully get our APOs uh, in front of as many developers as possible. Um, we're expecting all three routes to grow over the, the coming year. And yeah, I, I think, as I said, early days, long way to go, but we're seeing pretty positive sort of uh, responses to all three approaches. Good to hear. Well, as you say, it is early days, but are we seeing any trends yet evolving with regards to API exposure? Um, you know, we, we, you, you talked about the different routes there of, uh, of working alongside developers, whether it's engagement with hyperscalers or, or vendor-based platforms, or, you know, the, the, the direct route to enterprises is, is also an option. Whilst it's early days, I appreciate that, um, are we seeing any trends? I think it's probably too early to make a kind of a definitive statement to that. As I said, all three channels to market are being deployed and they were all on showcase in um, Barcelona. But, you know, we tried this sort of thing before and we're not naive. Ultimately, the market will decide what the best channel is. And so we're, we're trying to keep it as open as possible. Now, telcos are all hunting for new revenue streams. Um, where, therefore, is the economic value in contributing to a network API ecosystem? Well, in terms of value, we've actually done some work with McKinsey. Um, and they've kind of estimated that if the operators do expose lots of these network assets and capabilities via APIs, then they should be able to unlock uh, around about $300 billion, I think it is, by 2030. So that's a pretty bold and big number, but um, that's what our friends at McKinsey are forecasting. Well, let's move on to um, the future. Um, we've said it's early days, but we, we have a long road ahead of us. And perhaps we can conclude by looking at what the next steps are for the Open Gateway Initiative. I mean, we've seen some APIs that, that maybe are, um, if, if we use the word low-hanging fruit, uh, it, I don't want to be derogatory about this, but some, some of the APIs we've seen so far are, are maybe... As, as we might have expect to see in early days. Um, to get developers really excited and interested, we're obviously going to need to see um, more interesting and dynamic APIs. But what can we, what can telcos expect to see from you, the GSMA, and the whole initiative, perhaps for the rest of this year and looking into next year? Well, hold that thought, because <clears throat> I think it's a really good one. But, you know, we've had a strong start on the supply side, as I would say, and we'll kind of com continue to recruit more operators so that they'll expose more of their assets. Um, we will, of course, continue to develop more APIs as well in, in Kamara. Uh, <clears throat> and we should see more examples. In fact, we will see more examples of each of the three channels to market. Um, I would say that we want to change our glance a little bit at the GSMA to more demand side, kind of an outside-in perspective. Uh, as you kind of hinted at, we've already done that with the fintech sector. And that's where we've got these kind of fraud mitigation APIs. And they're being deployed pretty globally from Brazil to Spain, Ethiopia to Sri Lanka. Now, that's a model. It is low-hanging fruit because there's such an obvious utility. You know, to reduce fraud for a, for a major bank is a big deal. They're perfectly willing to pay for it. And it's the kind of model we'd like to repeat with other sectors. You know, trying to understand what they need. We want to try and create more of a kind of a customer pull-through rather than just an operator push. This is what we have. So we've been experimenting already with a number of potential use cases. Um, there's one showcased in Barcelona around safe drone flight, for example. And there are others around extended reality, immersive gaming. 
ultimately, and as you alluded to in the question, we will see more value uh, in future coming from the more advanced uh, 5G network capabilities and edge. So network slicing, that sort of stuff. But we have to be honest and say that will take some time to mature and scale globally. You know, the, the leaders will be doing that. In fact, some already are. But to get to a sort of a global scale is going to take some time. I would say the future is exciting and we can't wait to see how this develops. Thanks very much, Alex. Well, we look forward to seeing developments, uh, as I'm sure the whole telco community does, uh, seeing how things go and uh, hopefully getting involved as well. Alex, for now, good talking with you. Thanks so much for giving us an update on the Open Gateway Initiative. If you're watching this on day two of our Telco as a Platform Summit, then please don't go away as our live Q&A show is coming up in just a few moments. For now, though, thanks for watching and goodbye.